So in April of 2021 I came back from my hiatus with a video in which I tried to beat the main story of Fallout New Vegas with the BB gun, and as most of you know, it was quite the experience. Since that video I have gotten a lot of requests to tackle some of the DLC of New Vegas, something as of this point I have yet to do. That changes now though as I'm going to rip the bandaid off as today's the day we figure out can you beat Lonesome Road with a BB gun. Now I'm not doing this just because I hate myself, but in actuality I've seen the suggestion pop up quite frequently since that initial BB gun video. This is most likely because Lonesome Road is often considered to be the most difficult part of Fallout New Vegas. One quick thing before we get started, it is highly recommended that you don't start Lonesome Road until you're around level 25. So to give myself just a minuscule amount of cushion, I'm going to be using the same character from that initial BB gun run who is currently level 12. So with all that out of the way, let's begin. Upon loading my old save which I haven't touched since that last BB gun video, I make sure to decline going to see General Oliver as that will start the Battle of Hoover Dam. As a quick reminder, here's all my stats and perks just so we all understand what I have to work with. Stealth and crits are obviously the way to go with a gun this week if I actually want to do any sort of damage. Also, let's bring this up now, I will be using the Abilene Kid unique variant of the BB gun for the same reason I used it before. The damage output of the normal BB gun is so low to the point where I would just be avoiding 90% of combat encounters and considering Lonesome Road is mostly just combat, I don't know how interesting that would really be. Thankfully, we don't need to spend time getting ammo as I have exactly 4,754 BBs. Is that a little overkill? Possibly, but I'd rather be overprepared for death claws than underprepared. Making my way towards the entrance to the Divide, I realise that I must have gone through the Black Mountain shortcut before, so I'll need to walk in the direction of Prim from Good Springs. I re-familiarise myself with the BB gun as I take out all of the nearby powder gangers on the way. They only have about 10 hit points each, so even with a low base damage I am able to clear them out pretty fast. From here I easily make it to the NCR outpost outside of Prim, and just head up this path here to take me straight to the entrance to the DLC. I then briefly consider what I'm about to get myself into, and then enter the Divide. I take a moment to look at the desolate wasteland inside the desolate wasteland before entering the nearby Hopeville Silo Bunker. This is where we meet the real MVP of this run, Eddie. Not the same one from the base game, this one is so much better. Not only does he have more personality, he is much better in a fight, but best of all, he can activate these commissary terminals which allow me to buy items and repair my equipment. With that in mind I do all of those things as well as getting more ammo and purchasing the riot gear helmet for its sneak sight ability. Truth be told I forgot what this actually did, I just saw the word sneak and decided it would be useful going forward. Having Eddie with us lets me access the rest of the bunker, which could be seen as good or bad as while this lets me actually continue with the DLC, it also puts me face to face with the first real challenge. Sentry bots. The first one managed to get a few rockets off, crippling me in the process, but thanks to multiple lucky crits plus Eddie, we are able to walk away mostly unscathed. On the topic of luck, that's really where a lot of the challenge could stem from for this run. While the first sentry bot got destroyed rather quickly, I didn't have that good fortune when I was suddenly jumped by multiple of them while in this room. The saving grace here is that they are too thick to get inside the room and swarm me, but that once again doesn't stop them from pelting me with explosives. As you can see I was just not landing any critical shots on this sentry bot despite having max luck, the finesse perk and a weapon that is specifically designed to land more critical hits. As I described it before, it's like playing a game of Russian Roulette with each combat encounter. Most of the time it is like this, but then on the rare occasion, it is like this. This time though. The only reason that I'm not tearing all of my hair out right now is that one benefit of having max luck is that in the previous video I was able to go around and get kicked out of all of the casinos and then spend a large portion of that money on healing supplies. This means for the time being I can heal up at a pretty consistent rate thanks to having Stims hotkeyed at all times. After I am victorious in the Robot Wars, I emerge back into Dusty Land and I am greeted by one of my all time favourite Fallout characters, Ulysses. Usually the dialogue exchanges you have with him are some of the most interesting parts of Lonesome Road, but seeing how that doesn't really translate well to a video like this, along with the fact that I most likely won't touch this character again after this video, I just skip past all of his dialogue to quickly get a move on and find out what other horrors await me just down the street. Well, it doesn't take long to find out as I spot one of the marked men in the distance. As Sneak is my best bet for winning combat encounters, I try to get the drop on the first one. I don't know if this is lucky or unlucky, but I only managed to shoot his weapon out of his hand and not actually damage him. As I then approach to finish the job, another one pops up to stab me with his David Bowie knife. In a rare instance of the stars aligning however, I'm able to get some high damaging crits back to back and take him down within seconds. I'm able to keep this momentum going as when I turn my attention to the initial marked man, I gain some outside assistance from Dr Manhattan as he is atomized before my very eyes. 
Pushing ahead, Eddie and I have the heavens rain down on us as one of the marked men uses red glare from the top of a building. Shockingly, it isn't all that effective, especially compared to what some of the other marked men here are capable of. For some reason though, he stops firing at us, so I decide to make my way up the building to see what's going on, and he seems to just be contemplating life. As he is of no threat to either of us, I plan to leave him be, but Eddie had other ideas. Regardless, this brings me to an interesting point in the video. Right behind this marked man is the laser detonator which is required to destroy the nuclear warheads to clear a path to proceed. This presents an issue as it is technically a weapon that you must equip and use, and as such is not the BB gun. However, I choose to see it more like Loyal's detonator in the Boomer's questline. While it is a weapon you must use, you aren't actively attacking anyone with it, so I think it's okay. With that in mind, I use it to clear a path after the nearby marked men are out of the picture, and by all means if you believe this invalidates the run, then feel free to say I failed the challenge. This then has a bunch of marked men charge me, along with a unique one named Blister. Gross. The radiation from the explosion must have done something to me as one of them just runs right past me without even stopping to look. Granted, I made good on this by taking him out in one shot with a sneak attack. Despite clearly being the most important member of the group, Blister goes down rather easily as he gets himself backed into a corner by Eddie and then receives to get more blisters until I come along and eventually end his suffering. At this point I begin to form a new strategy when it came to fighting the enemy. If I failed to take them out in stealth I would just run straight up to them and begin hip firing repeatedly until they went down. Obviously this isn't the best idea in certain situations, but for the time being it works pretty effectively at taking out the remaining marked men. I then detonate another warhead, talk to Eddie at the worst possible time, befriend a skeleton and then make my way inside the collapsed overpass tunnel. We have a brief intermission from the marked men for now, but don't you worry, that doesn't mean the fun stops here. In fact, we are introduced to an entirely new enemy, the Tunnelers. Well, they're new in appearance anyway, when it comes to combat they behave and fight just like the Trogs from Fallout 3's The Pit DLC. Now, remember how in the Abraham Lincoln video I mentioned that Trogs are incredibly weak and not at all threatening? Well, someone from Obsidian clearly felt the same way and dialed their aggressiveness up to 11. Trying to run in and deal with them the same way I'd been fighting the marked man was just not going to work. Stealth was pretty much vital here if I wanted to make it through. The only problem with that method though however, was as their name suggests, they tend to tunnel under the ground and in most cases appear right behind you. I also got to see what it was like to be on the receiving end of the super slam perk for once, and I must say I much prefer to be the one doing the super slamming. At one point I was able to find a piece of higher ground that they couldn't get to, and as such I was able to slowly pick off any ones that ventured out in front of me. This only worked for a few of them however, and as I went further on in I got dogpiled once again. During the fighting I watched as one of them briefly ascended to the heavens, and not wanting to be smite by god, I decided it was just time to sprint for the exit. Back outside once again and Ulysses talks long enough to make Hideo Kojima blush, and then it's on to duking it out with a few more marked men. The game tells me I got a crit in the first one, but from my perspective it looks like Eddie just dismembered him with his Sith Lightning. Next up for target practice was Beast, another unique marked man. Just like Blister however before him, he was not all that impressive. Sure, the shoulder mounted gun is pretty powerful, but thanks to two back to back Vats crits, his head just glides right off his shoulders. The main reason I am even bringing attention to this lackluster encounter is because his helmet adds 2 points to my crit chance, and seeing how that is the only thing giving me a fighting chance at this point, I immediately put on this helmet. After this I am able to get rid of another warhead and then climb up this old dilapidated building and get myself the advanced riot gear. Obviously I wouldn't be switching out Beast's helmet, but I am able to repair the armour a little bit and wear that. Now, here comes the moment most of you have probably been waiting for. How am I going to deal with the death claws on the highway? Well at first, simply put, I don't. They rip me to shreds because I'm using a BB gun and they are death claws. I feel that doesn't need to be explained. The only saving grace here was that I could fight them one at a time, but don't let that fool you, I still got slashed to pieces repeatedly. My best bet was to always make sure that I got an automatic sneak attack critical, because if I didn't, I may as well reload as I was essentially dead already. From there it was all just up to, what else, luck. Sure it certainly helped if Eddie placed himself between me and the Deathclaw and zapped him a few times, but Eddie was never going to survive in this scenario for more than 5 seconds. After, shall we say, a few deaths, I figured my best play was to get the initial sneak attack like I said, and then once he begins to make his way over to me, I head back up the old building where I find the advanced riot gear and just shoot at him over and over until either the BB gun broke or he died. Seeing how AI pathing is not the creation engine's strong suit, the death claw retreats back to the bridge and then just continues walking back and forward as you can see on screen. I continue to shoot at him for about 4 minutes until he finally decides he's had enough and drops dead. Good thing too, as the gun was fairly close to breaking. 
Thankfully, once a day, Eddie can slightly repair whatever weapon you currently have equipped, so I just do a few cycles of asking him for repairs, and then wait in 24 hours until I am satisfied with the weapon's durability. One down, a few more to go, so it was on to Deathclaw number 2, and surprise surprise, he kills me almost instantly. Not wanting to repeat exactly what I just did for the first Deathclaw, I instead managed to use part of the highway to hop onto one of the nearby buses, and I'm able to take out the Deathclaw from there rather quickly due to some crits. On to the final two Deathclaws and I decided to just try and run past them with the help of Eddie and the single turbo I had in my inventory. While the idea was solid, I ended up walking right into a bunch of satchel charges and lost the use of both of my legs. Next attempt and I'm a lot more cautious of my surroundings and decide to stay off the main road and head up to the right which not only stops me from blowing up my own legs but also causes the Deathclaws to get confused, allowing me to get some distance from them. I assume they must have begun chasing me again because not a minute later I heard an explosion and gained 50 experience points. So at the very least, the satchel charges the marked men laid down did my job for me. Speaking of the marked men, we face yet another unique one with a name beginning with the letter B. Bonesaw. Bonesaw is ready. While he looks intimidating without chainsaw, he isn't too bright and never manages to land a single hit on me. He even made my job pretty easy by just standing still for a moment while I pelted him with pellets. Me and Eddie deal with his rather unremarkable backup, and then I make Eddie an accomplice to my war crimes as the two of us open a missile silo and decide to just launch a nuke somewhere in the divide. As we flee the scene, we stumble onto the nearby lift, which is required we travel down to continue on. Thing is, I've played the original Metal Gear Solid enough times to know by now that any time you see a lift this big, you're about to be swarmed by enemies. Sure enough, a family of tunnelers show up to ruin our day almost as soon as we start the elevator. I'm able to get a few good shots off and do some decent damage, but as I seem to be spawning indefinitely, I thought that I was about to hit a rather big snag in this run. That is until random explosions started going off all over the place that weren't harming me in the slightest, but would pretty much one shot all of the tunnelers. Needless to say, this very quickly went from being a segment I was worried about, to becoming probably one of the easiest parts of the entire DLC. After the ride was finished, I leveled up and took the toughness perk, because by this point, trying to be a brick wall of defence is about the only chance of survival that I have. Entering the Ashton Missile Silo and I make sure to grab the Weapon Repair Kit that is right in front of you as you enter. I don't need it just yet because of Eddie, but even though it's been a very long time since I last played any of New Vegas' DLCs, I distinctly remember that he will get taken away from me at some point, and when that happens, I don't want the BB gun to have low durability. Further on in, I nearly ship myself as I open a random door and find myself on the opposite end of a missile launcher. Lucky for me, while they are aggressive, they also aren't very smart, so getting close to them and rapidly mashing the right trigger is enough to send them to the scrap heap. Some very good news from this encounter is that he seemed to be guarding an auto dock station, which is good for me as 1. It is free heals, and 2. I have been suffering from radiation poisoning for a while at this point with no way to cure it. Yes, I was stupid enough to enter the divide without Radaway or Radex. You may all go down into the comments and disapprovingly shake your heads. Next is a rather short and quick section as we run up the inside of this building and sneak attack tunnelers to our heart's content. When we leave said building, I am greeted with by far the most open area of the DLC yet. Better yet, though, is that for once I have the high ground, and as such, I'm able to pick off the marked men and the mole rats with ease. This is by far the most powerful I've felt so far with this children's toy, but all good things must come to an end, however, as the next area is basically a breeding ground for tunnelers, and I once again am reduced to the status of a chew toy. I'm not going to sugarcoat this, I don't see any way in which I fight through all of them without nearly using all of my healing supplies, as well as having godlike luck. To that end, I sneak up as far as I can without getting spotted, and then once I am, I just book it for the nearby entrance to the buried buildings. There's actually nothing in here except some supplies and a conveniently placed bed. I then figure that the game is not so subtly telling me to prepare myself, so I also make sure to have Eddie repair my gun, and wouldn't you know it once we leave, Ulysses calls back and informs me he now has custody over Eddie, and as such my friend leaves me all alone to fight more Deathclaws and marked men. That's right, the Deathclaws are back, and they are just as much of a slog to deal with as before. In my first attempt, I tried stealth. Considering they are in the way of where I need to go, it doesn't take a genius to figure out how that went. Next attempt, I used my brain and just climbed up on top of some nearby debris, and just dealt with them the same way I did with the first two on the highway earlier. Boring? Yes. Efficient? Also yes. With the killing machines out of the way, I engaged in a shootout with three nearby marked men who were perched on top of a broken building. They can't really hit me from where they are, but I can hit them, so it just boils down to how long will it take for the game to throw me a bone. The answer? About 2 minutes. I've had longer firefights, don't get me wrong, but by this point it's beginning to grate on me, and besides, there are only so many ways I can say, and then the pellet caused him to explode into teeny tiny giblets. The next segment just had me blowing up a bunch of warheads to proceed. So, to spice things up, Wesley Snipes decided to peer out of nowhere and tried to kill me, 
so that was nice. I then took out some marked men, leveled up, maxed out my repair skill, stood on some satchel charges, and before long I was able to make my way to Yulsey's temple, but more importantly, the maintenance and storage section to get my friend back. As I enter, I loot the nearby marked man and get a single shot of turbo, which will be useful later, and then I murder my way through more sentry bots and turrets, all in the name of friendship to get my little tool station back. I then ask him to hack the nearby commissary station for me and I buy all the healing items that they have, and from there, all that remains is the final battle with Ulysses himself. Much like the battle with the Legate, Ulysses is not actually hostile until after the player talks to him or if they shoot him first. I of course want to get the sneak attack critical, so I prepare the only way I know how, by consuming one of each type of drug. The sneak attack actually does more damage than I was expecting. I then get super lucky and followed it up with a few more crits, to the point where I thought that this fight was going to be over rather quickly. However, that was not the case, because even when I dosed up on Turbo, his medical eyebots were always healing him far faster than I could hurt him. Not helping matters was that he could go invisible, making him pretty difficult to see, and the fact that the marked men would start joining the fight would just complicate things even further. Needless to say, I am on the receiving end of Ulysses' beating stick more times than I care to count. All of you are probably screaming at me about how I should deactivate the eyebots and completely trivialise this fight, but here is something I have neglected to mention up until now. This is the first time I have ever even attempted this battle. I've only ever played the DLC twice before now, and both times I just talked him down with speech, as in my opinion, Ulysses is too interesting a character to just kill at the end of the DLC. So, what I am basically trying to say is that I died over and over and over again in this segment many times because I was not even aware disabling the iBots was a thing. Here is me literally stumbling upon it by accident in one of my better attempts where I was able to lure him down on the lower part of the structure. As soon as I realised this, I then loaded right back to when I entered the fight, and once I got the sneak attack on him, I headed down to both control stations to deactivate his little helpers while he was distracted by Eddie. Once I turned off the set and console, and once again got my legs nearly blown to pieces by satchel charges because I swear I am just blind to them, I begin clearing out some of the marked men while I look for the man himself. I ended up finding him by complete happenstance as I was running backwards while being chased by this gentleman, and fell down to the lower levels. I then took this opportunity to get as close to him as possible, and began to unload on him while I took some turbo. Sadly, I wasn't lucky enough to land enough crits to take him out, but I did manage to obliterate the nearby marked man that was giving me trouble, so it wasn't all bad. As he was determined to use his melee weapon for some reason, it was pretty easy at this stage to keep his attention on me, as I just slowly backed up, all the while hip firing constantly. It took a lot of ammo and attempts, but finally I was able to paint the walls in Ulysses, effectively finishing Lonesome Road. All that was left to do was to head to the nearby console and deactivate the missile, as I am allied with the NCR after all. From here the missiles were launched, Eddie and I ran for the exit, I became the only surviving postman, finishing the DLC and proving yes, you can indeed beat Lonesome Road with only a BB gun. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, I know you've been asking for me to tackle some of the new Vegas DLC for a while, so I hope you really liked this challenge. Despite the difficulty of this run, I honestly had a lot of fun. Like I said, it's been so long since I last played through any of New Vegas' DLCs that this honestly felt like a completely new experience in parts especially the final battle with Ulysses. Regardless, that's going to be the end of this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like, and if you're interested in more challenges in the future, feel free to subscribe to try to have one of these videos out every week. My name's Norbert, I say for everyone, I'll see you all in the next video.